I'm very I think strong. Just going, just going again. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I got it, I got it, guys. Nice. Oh, nice. 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 Hello everyone, my name is Aragon, and today I'm going to be joined by Finn to discuss a controversial topic. One that people have a lot of passionate opinions on. And without further ado, Finn, right, here's the question straight up. No. What is the hardest role in the game? Top lane, of course, is the hardest role in the game because you are a victim of the map. Uh, whatever goes wrong on the map, you're paying the price. Uh, even more competitive, I'd almost say, because if your team is losing and you're playing top lane, you know all, all those boys are coming top. Oh, you lost your bot tower, suddenly there's a free Seraphilius with a Lulu behind him hitting your tower, and you're like, mm, our, your bot is like, mm, we can't come, sorry. Fantastic answer. I'm so yeah. glad I don't have to convince you. Yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. The best role, uh, the hardest role. In the hardest game, role, of course, yeah. But I feel like I'd have to convince some of the audience, because I mm. feel like people are very passionate about their role being the hardest. So today I have two case studies, okay? My first case study, Kadrel. Kedril. I don't know if you know this, but Kedril, I know you're watching. You have failed two attempts at playing unranked a challenger in top lane. Often what happens, Finn, is he'll topple out at about 500 LP and oh, yeah. his mental will boom. And yeah, yeah. He's done that twice. What do you think when you see an OPGG nice. like this? Uh, well, I do Any think he thoughts? should maybe study the Bible a bit more. Because uh, okay. just like Moses, he needs to cross the Red Sea. Uh, he <laughs> ma doesn't seem to have the ability to do it right now, but I do believe in his uh, future. I do like the great KDAs a Any lot. Any tips and tricks you can give him based on what you're seeing right now? Um, maybe stick to easier champions. Mm. Um, Aatrox might be hard for you, buddy. Um, so let's see the win rates. Yeah, I mean, I, mm, no, I mean, I think. There's a lot of other roles for you. Uh, Lee Sin is really good. Uh, he's a jungle mid main, right? Yeah. So do you think this conclusively proves that jungle mid mains are worse than top laners? Hmm. Well, I do think that uh, as this is proven, it's proven. just pure evidence, isn't it? you know it? what's the best thing? What is the best he's thing? He's not even the only example. Wow. Okay. Hit me. Tyler won. Right. Tyler won. Tileros. Played every single role to challenger. Mm. And do you know how many games it took him to get top lane? No. 3,000. <laughs> 3,000 games of games to Challenger. Jungle was 2,000. Mm. Mid lane, 1,000. Support, 500. Do you think this actually represents the difficulty of the roles? So you're telling me top lane is three times harder than mid and yeah, six sure. times harder than support. Mm. So top laners are like six times better than support players, judging by these stats. That's pretty accurate, I'd say. I mean, I'm not one to deny stats. Like, they're very factual. And um, I do think we have solid evidence. Do you think we've convinced the audience and everyone at home that top lane is, in fact, the hardest role in the game? I'm not sure. There's a lot of delusion going around that top lane is easy, that you just get carried every game. But I think these are from naysayers and non-believers. Mm. Uh, so I do think there can be a... Give me a ranking, quick. Hit me, <clears throat> hit me. So hardest role, uh, do you want the, the mechanical or the uh, mentally taxing lists? Well, that's dif difficult because yeah. AD carry would be up there with top lane, I feel like. Give me difficulty overall on okay, average. Okay, okay. I do think top lane is the hardest role in solo queue yeah. uh, to, to carry fast, with. Fast, fast. Yeah, okay. Top lane. Uh, and then jungle, mid, AD, support. Okay. AD is very easy. And one of the last questions that I do have is, yes. I don't know if you remember this, but we actually played solo queue against each other. I played Renekton, oh, and really? you played Kled. And after the game, I actually added you, and oh. you added me back, and I said, what the heck do I do in this matchup? Because it feels awful, and you replied, you know, the classic, get tab eyes level six, volatile trades, favor Kled. Do you often add people and discuss the game? Is there something you do? Are you passionate mm, about it? Well, if people, I think are, if people I think are good, adds me, I'll add them back. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic, but that's all we have time for. Finn, I'm so glad you joined me today. I thought this discussion was fantastic. Casters, over to you.
was, that was literally just like two top lane boys just hanging out and chilling. Uh, Aragon's ego is going to be so inflated. <laughs> yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, but to be fair, Finn put him in his place a little bit. But the, the top lane thing, I believe, um, top lane is a hard role. And now that I know support is so easy, that's probably why. Yeah, I mean, you want a rose pop stop, don't I've you? I've got to change. <laughs> I've got to be like the shy. I've got to change that. But we're going into our next one. Second last game of the day, second last game of the week. And when it's Rogue versus Mad, you got to question what's going to come out of the draft. Because I think so far, Dagda, between these two teams, two teams that right now are sitting at the bottom at one and four, I think anything's on the table when you have top laners like Mirwin going onto the rift, and when you have someone like Finn, who's a bit of a Kled OG as well, sitting in the mix. Yeah, I think it's kind of surprising to see Madeline's quite down here, right? They look fantastic yeah. in finals in winter, but haven't been able to find their groove in spring. And I think a lot of that is kind of teams getting prepared for them a little bit better. I mean, we sure. saw it yesterday with Carmine Corp. Early wards to stop push on bot into invade, which is something that Ayoye traditionally likes to go for. And finding moments to punish Supa as he overextends on bot lane. Like, teams are starting to figure out Madeline's Koi, and we're, we're getting a little bit less of the, the wackiness, I'll say, from guys like Mirwin in the top lane. They're trying to play a little bit more um, your standard League of Legends, and they just quite haven't been able to find that success on, on some of these more traditional picks. Yeah, I guess the most wacky we've seen so far is the Twist of Fate, but I just have that in the, the back of my mind that I'm like, well, Mewen will play at least something a little different, at least something a little bit more wacky. Up against Finn, maybe not, uh, depending on the fact that Finn coming in for Rogue. I mean, a lot of the time, I think we've seen his, him, him as a bit of reliable. Would be more reliable if he could get it across the finish of the line, though, alongside with Rogue, who are now on blue side. And first pick, Oriana for Larson. Straight up. Yeah, I mean, look, makes sense. I think Oriana, one of the strongest mid laners in the patch. You're seeing a lot of AD carries taken away, though, so potential here to maybe go for an AD carry selection here for a super and try and put yourselves into a decent spot. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of hard. Jungle could also be like, you want to take the leads in early here to maybe just go for, hey, we're going to be fine. But I think a poppy response here from Arcoon could work out quite well as well. Even if it is the Jarvan, I think similar idea. You can just take a, a poppy in response here and you'll be pretty all right. It's something that's been glazed over quite a bit recently though. I mean, again, Probably something I agree with, but not often seen. And Xin Zhao instead, they're just going for safety nets here. For Marcoon, that top tier jungler, now that the Jarvan's been picked in. And for Finn, I mean the Cassante, yeah. Okay, not even looking at bottom lane here with all the AD carry bands. Yeah, that's a little bit concerning, because I think you could take a, your, like something like a Zaya here if you want to for Super, or at least select your AD carry pick. And then you're going to be right the way down the tier list because you're going like, hey, look, we've seen a little bit of Sivir. We get rid of her. Yep. Pomp has played the Zeeks, but honestly, I don't think he looked particularly good on it. Actually, they're going to take the Twist of Fate. So at least we've seen some teams flex this into the the, so the AD carry role. I mean, we got to see Karzy on it yesterday, but uh, potential here if you want to. I was going to say for Madeline's Cody, just bully ban out the uh, AD carry role and try and open up that flex opportunity, but not going to be the case. But Rogue, the Evelio is going to be banned away. I think like AD carry... High, high priority here in this next rotation for Madeline's Koi. Especially when you're getting rid of some of the duos. I mean, Aphelios taken off, we saw at start of day. The Renata with the Callista, a very classic 2v2. Uh, one that for Comp and Zoelis, they have played the most of as well. But remember that bottom line has also played things like Ziggs. So not too far off seeing maybe something a little bit different. But when you don't have strong AD damage, it does feel like Madeline's Koi have come into this very well prepared, taking off a lot of possibilities of these duos. That, Again, what, what, what is left? That's what we're going to start questioning. Yeah, I think it's Zaya, Sivir, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff starts to rise up in priority. Um, I, I think Zaya a little bit underutilized, to be perfectly honest, in LEC. I still think she's a pretty strong pick, but yep. we'll have to see exactly what the uh, response is going to be here. I think, Super, you, though you do take it, uh, your AD carry pick here just to force that pressure on. on. Yeah, okay, Zaya taken away. So, yeah, I think it'll be a Sivir. Jinx could be the other opportunity, yeah, which to, could work out, but it's a little bit weird because I well look I think Alvaro essentially you have to go for its fresh pick here to try and keep her safe because yeah. with um, the the likes of the Cassante who's going to be trying to find flex angles on her even trying to deal damage to the Zin Zhao is going to be a little bit difficult too so um, maybe they even go back for something like Lucian Nami to be perfectly honest but short range into Jinx who's a late game scaler EU Lucian Nami ain't played though that's the problem isn't it I mean I it's mean, not like the could East. Be. okay yeah yeah it is I was going to say you could even go Cog Lulu if you really want oh, to, yes. but yeah, That's just going to go angle. back towards the, the Lucian Nami. So I think it is. it does make a lot, little bit of sense. I mean, you can bully the lane, try and pressure. You want some sort of pushing in on bot side to set up Marcoon for invades because that's traditionally how we see the Zinzel played out. 
Um, and as well, when you get towards like mid game team fights, the wave from Nami is going to cause some issues here for the Jinx, but not actually going to go for the Thresh. Instead, just going to go for the Nautilus. So leaving Super to be a little bit more self sufficient in these fights, which could work out pretty well for Finn, honestly, if he can find some of these flank moments to just take Super out of a fight. But I am interested to watch Rogue take these team fights. I mean, yesterday they were a lot more proactive. I think complementing them yesterday was something I didn't do in the previous split tag. I got a little bit frustrated by Rogue, but watching them burst Vitality, yeah, even though work. they didn't win the game, at least they had options. At least they tried to create paths. In this game, for Marcoon, keeping the game stable, I think, is a really important part, considering that we do see Mewen up with the TF top again. We've got the Ari as well. Six unlocked starts moving across the map. The Mad Lions, Koi, we know that there's going to be a lot of overloading here and at least trying to get that pace of the game forward. Let's see if Rogue can chill out a bit and play like they did yesterday. Play a little bit in control, use those wards again. I mean, I'm excited. I don't care it's a one and four Dagda. I just want to see the boys beef. Yeah, I do think those Rogue really do need to hit the ground running because I think if you end up with a Twisted Fate who gets, you know, start to chip away at Terrorers, they start to be able to play at side lanes, it's going to be a lot more difficult to try and find those moments. So get control of this bot lane, get these early Rip Charles, crack down mid turret, allow Lucian to play through that mid lane with the support of the Xin Zhao. Like, you have a very direct game plan that you can play out here as uh, Rogue and then leaning that in towards, like, Dragons. But if that starts to fall apart, I'm kind of liking what's on the opposite side here. Okay, well, we'll track it as we go through. Getting into game. The win here bumps you up towards SK, towards KC. Get you out of the bottom of this barrel. At least someone's walking away with a second win here today. And for Rogue, we already talked about it. They struggled last split, didn't make playoffs. And when eight teams out of ten make playoffs and you don't, that feels real bad. As we said, Mad Lions Court now have this big benchmark that they've got to hit because last split, making it all the way to finals, we've got the same roster here. We should see the same breadth of talent hitting that same top of the standings. It's been a rough start, but let's see if they can open it up or at least close it up at the end of week two. As, good, as you say, massive, massive opportunity to try and set yourself up. Be two and four. You will also join either whoever loses between Carmen Corp and SK Gaming in our next game, but just having that opportunity to Put yourself one win up, one step up as we start to enter into our last week. Gives you a little bit of a cushion, but starts here. Can Rogue start to bring this back? Or can Madeline's Koi start to find the the form they had in winter? Because it's just been so bizarre to see them slip down the table like this. I agree. In this, in this bottom side, though, I want to see what happens with Super bringing out the Jinx. Now, Jinx is something I saw, saw this morning, Dagda. Something that got a free head start in the lane and then took off. And if anyone remembers Jinx, they know once you start getting a kill in a fight, once you start getting killed in a skirmish, Jinx can take over with lethal tempo. Especially as you get a couple of items under your belt, you are a ranged threat that a lot of people struggle to deal with. And if we're looking at the comp again, there's a lot of engage, but Dagda, once that engage is down, who's got the range there to deal with Super and Full Blast? Yeah, I think that's where a lot of this has to come down to how rogue position for their fights. And uh, because on the upside, like Madeline's Koi, not particularly tanky themselves. Like, yes, El Yoya will get some tankiness in him, but realistically he's gonna be going towards like Sunder Sky and this kind of stuff where he will provide frontline. But if you have like comp ulting across the loss, if you've got Larson ulting across, it makes it very difficult to try and play in through these choke points. And yeah. I think that's where Rogue have to be very smart about how they decide to take fights. And I think that's actually been my biggest criticism of them. Even we got to see a little bit yesterday from Vitality, which was like just being decisive on the go button. Like, I've been talking about it in um, PGL as well on Saturday night. Like, we want to find these moments where we're like, hey, we can take the fight. But by the time everyone agrees they take the fight, they've missed that chance. But this is a composition where you have to make sure oh, you you're taking those moments. Yeah. Further to your point, like, if you're indecisive, it's going to show. Alvaro with some good hooks so far, and it causes the heal from Zoelis. Super just runs up and is staying in rocket form to get the range. Now, heal was used by Super in response, but... It looks like it will be Mad Koi hitting level two first and trying to win out that 2v2 as the push continues on. Freskawi looking for a deep ward here. Will drop it on the Raptor camp and that's where Marku's going next. I'm just going to try and see where Marku is. The fact that they spot the Raptors haven't been taken, they should know the Marku is going to be coming down towards this bottom side of the map, at least in going some there. regard, right? Um, so Ayoya going to start to move in. Maybe they're looking for a dive or at least to try and cover this push because you are at the melee shove into the spot lane, which means there's an opportunity for Comp and Zoelis to try and freeze this. The engage starts. Wind becomes lightning, of course, from Marcoon. And to correct myself, I was going to say, that's where he's going next. But actually, the path down, he's still got Krugs. He started up at topside Dagda. Only did Wolves left Gromp. 
So it's an interesting path here from Mark Uno. I guess unpredictable there for Mad Koi to track. I think it was actually just a smart ad adaptation from Mark Uno as it came in. Because <clears throat> you saw the push from Super Alvaro in onto this bottom side turret. Mm -hmm. Because you're in that range versus melee matchup in the support role, it's very easy for you to actually get a freeze here for Compenso at least. And that's essentially what they're doing. Look, it will break. They will start to slow push over the next couple of waves. Yep. But it means that you're going to get a much better reset here. You can see just Longsword picked up here for Supa. Whereas Comp is going to pick up two, three more waves before he goes for his own reset. You come back in with a much bigger advantage here. So I really like the adaptation for Marcoon because it's netted a massive win here for Comp and Zoelise, where they will just have more item power when they come back into this lane. And then Lushinami matters so much. But remember, a lot of people think about Lushinami is just the lane. Like, there is still a lot of great mid-game damage from Lucian, especially when you get one item between the two. I mean, we're not talking about the same old... Uh... Uh, Imperial Mandate, like massive rush, but still, like Rogues 2v2, when they start getting on the map as well, there's a lot of explosive damage to look forward to. And that's where I'm a little bit worried about for Rogue, because we've seen Comp get leads on Callista, and Rogue don't really know how to try and play around it. And traditionally, True. we've seen this. Actually, I'm going to go off at this point. What will they do with the lead here? That's the question, isn't it? Because if the dive comes through, at least to set up for Rogue need to pull the trigger. We want to see decisiveness as Super flashes away and out plays Marcoon. This dive going pear shaped, so at least flashes as well. Comp is out of there. Oh, oh no, that ain't good to kick off the game. The flash on the wind becomes lightning from Super was huge. Might even get the... Uh, yes, there flash it is! Stretch line, zap! From long range and now getting excited. Super, go in, brother, who cares? Oh, the spacing! Cop runs up and you're right, the spacing makes all the difference. A double kill! Dagger, I told you this morning in the LPL, I saw a Jinx get ahead in lane just like this. And now it's deja vu. Oh, and it's a disaster! As Marcoon goes for this, they can't really figure out who they want to tank, but it has to be Marcoon because the release is so low. But the flash in the wind becomes lightning. That's so much of the damage yeah. coming through from the Zin Zhao. And Comp and Zoelise are just too low to try and tank the rest of it. And great play from Alvaro here. The flash hook onto Zoelise. They know Zoelise could get away because he'd already flashed out from underneath the tower. And then just trying to use the space in here. Gets a little bit messed up because the creeps trying to be homies for Comp. But it's just not enough. <laughs> oh. Damn creeps. Two kills for the Jinx. Yeah, Matt, uh, a cheering after that one. Not only does a kill go to Alvaro, stopping the dive, giving first blood to this Nautilus, but Marcoon, remember as well, forced to reset nice and early. And this is going to be hard for Rogue. A 2k gold lead already set up as now for a mid gang. Glasser might be in trouble, flashes away from the charm. He gets out thanks to the Spirit Rush that Freskawi only just hit. Yeah, and look, Alvaro is going to be able to move back down towards his bot side, put some pressure on towards Rogue as they start to push out of the bot lane. So Ayoya will be spotted on this ward, doesn't realize he's been spotted. And Marcoon, they can just turn onto him if they want to. Depends how much damage gets done in the meantime, though. As Comp steps up, Zoelis is there as a helping hand. Drex line kicks it off and again with the zap, cleanse away. Comp now out of summoners completely as the jungler's 1v1 in the backside. But look at what's happening here. He back for a double longsword and Berserker Greaves and the trading is just so obvious. It's so difficult as Comp to actually trade against Super now. He's got the boots, the extra movement speed to continuously play at range here. And the fact that Oyo had been spotted. Rogue didn't feel comfortable to just try and turn on towards the Jarvan. And again, the indecision there, going back to bite them as Mad Lion's Koi went out of the push. Now they'll get this dragon for themselves as well. It's again stemming off one little lead here, but this time for Mad Koi, it's bridging into a lot more. You already mentioned the dragon kicking off here. You can see that Marcoon is not making a beeline for the grubs on the top side of the map. Instead, just going back to clearing, trying to catch up on some of the tempo lost in bot side and trying to get a, a, a hole back in this early game for Rogue. Yeah, I think Marcoon at least will get one void group here just because you've got the push in top side and this probably is one moment to get one on this first initial take. And um, we'll set him up with the little bit of extra experience he get off of that first grub that's taken and then he'd be in an okay spot. But you know what my problem is? Now, Mirwin has ult. Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many. Brent Gowie now has ult again soon as well. So we've got a lot of tools for Mad Koi that will be up soon. Fresh Gao and El Yoya are grouping up, moving together. I want to know how El Yoya, how far is he off level six? About half an EXP bar. Thank you, LEC, for the purple bars. Not used to this dagger. <laughs> El Yoya, I mean, got I'm a bit of farming to do. Now, Marco a little bit closer this time. So we'll see with that top side clear where it lands him, and especially with the starter grubs that still haven't been looked at here. So, man, got to be happy about that. Well, this is the thing. I think Mark Kuhn at this stage has kind of been sent with his tail tucked between his legs. Like, there's not really many opportunities for you to now take advantages in this bot lane. Super has pushed consistently. El Yoya has already been able to establish a lot of vision on this bottom side. You can see they got some stuff at the back of red. River is littered with 
uh, red wards as well. And it just means the super gets to push all day, starts to take turret plates, and Comp and Nuzo Elise unfortunately just become obsolete. Yep. So I think this is a position now where Marcoon, you got to try and change your tactics, but it's kind of hard. Like, you don't really want to try and play around mid lane because Frescoe just gets to dip every time you show up. You can try and play off the ult from Larson, but that's really difficult to do. And trying to find team fights on top side doesn't really work out because, I mean, Larson's your main source of damage, but he's just not at a position where he's strong in Orianna. So, True. and even. <laughs> But I say that, oh, yeah, he's here to cover in case Marcoon tries to do anything. So it just becomes very, very tough for Rogue to dig themselves out of this position. I'm wondering if Bill is going to back away from that mid gank. Yes, he is in the end. Uh, spotted out Destiny, going to be used to get back to lane only here for Mirwin. Remember, his dredge line connects. He's not going to be involved in this play. Good depth charge. Super Mega Death Rocket at close range. Comp is burning. He won't die, but he flashes again. And Dagda, look at the size of the wave crashing in. Yeah. Mad Koi are going to get more plates for free. And this is even when you don't have Oyoi in the vicinity as well. So Super going to take this. So at least going to stick around because he has Marcoon in the area. But oh yeah, Alvaro, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. Or well, maybe he should. El Yoy is coming down now with Cataclysm. Aqua Prison comes out. Super still just farming away. Close to getting a third plate here on this bottom side. But it doesn't matter how much. Uh, how much we're like, oh yeah, opportunity for Rogue. I mean, Mad are just taking this early game by storm. Bot is just such an issue. Yeah, and look, we've talked a lot about bot lane, but top lane is just as bad, right? Mirin, massive CS lead for Very himself. True. And a lot of that gold, obviously, is going to be because of the passive, but he's going to start taking turret plates. He's getting the lead that he needs. Finn Oi. forces the flash, though. Nice job from Finn to actually get that out from Mirin there. Interview buff before the game. Just set Finn up for success. Well, he's going to need to find success because, again, you just mentioned top because obviously it's going map wide right now for Rogue. Like this early game with Marcoon's attention going wrong in any one lane. Uh, Mirwin with the range advantage is naturally having a much better time. 1k up thanks to TF Passive as well as for Mad. They're trying to attempt to gank bot side as Zoelis drops a ward. But there's two big engage tools here ready to set up as Zoelis. It could be dredge line, but instead just watered down for safety. Yeah, I look, Static Shiv picked up for comp will help him try and clear out some of these waves as Super pushes in. And it's a bit of an earlier spike, 2,700 gold versus like the 3,000 of a Kraken Slayer, but it's not exactly going to lend itself to I'm going to be massive in these uh, early stages. With Marcoon, what's he doing? Flash away though from Melio. I could ask him the same thing. Shoko brings Alvaro back on in. You get the Crescent Guard out, but jumping into melee range, Frescao, he's out. Oh, Yoya tries to get back in once again. A little bit messy from both as the Rocket goes under. Marcoon will survive, but again, things are looking a little bit scrappy around this mid lane. Yeah, I mean, look, the flash was burned from Oyo to try and pick up the kill, but not actually like a lot used that won't be back up for that dragon that's in a minute, right? You still have Oyo's ultimate be up and available, so that's going to be the main thing that they're trying to use. Even Alvaro hitting level six, he's going to have his ultimate available. So Madeline's Koi not overextending on the play and just making sure that they still have an opportunity if they want to take bot lane terror or if they even want it for a dive here. You can see Marcoon trying to make his way down to this bot side. Well, he's now coming back as well. There's Culling. Now, it can be absorbed, but both bot laners are getting pretty low as El Yoya, even though he's here, not going to be able to do anything in response. And for Comp, as he pushes out, he's like, yeah, we must be fine now, right, guys? Surely? Surely we're okay. Well, with Marcoon, you are. There's a heal to get away from the tidal wave, the tsunami. Yeah, I'm so at least just sorry. waving hello. Yes, he is. Has to. As three versus three continues bot side. Because Dragon's coming up in about 15 seconds, and it looks like for Rogue, really wanting to contest this one is on their menu. I just don't know if they're strong enough. Look, maybe you can try and play off of the uh, the first item spike here for comp. Okay. It's kind of the big upside here of taking the static shave is you get that earlier spike. You get like five more AD, but 5% less attack speed. But that works out for Lucian, who wants to be a spell slinger. Uh, oh, he, he has to be alive he, he first. in a straight line. Dagda Cataclysm on top won't save his life either. At melee range, El Joya still somehow gets the kill with Super Zolti. But it's a kill nonetheless. As Frescaui versus Larson through mid through a low mana bar might be there. But wind becomes lightning again. Frescaui flashes away from Marcoon. Something, but not everything, because now Mad get their second dragon. I mean, you still have TP for Frescaui if they really need to get back into it. Even Mirwin wandering there from the top side to make sure he could get involved. So right now, Madeline's Koi, they're controlling the map. And for Rogue, I think it's a bit of a disaster in the draft. Not taking the early AD carry that we talked like we talked about. Trying to go for um, the earlier pickup on your top lane means that Comp kind of gets forced into this position in a matchup that just isn't particularly comfortable for them. And now falling behind, it only gets worse. That does say D or F, ladies and gentlemen. That is not an OF, as I think I've seen some memes online. <laughs> you can show me that. But we, we just have to remember, D or F. I realized what that was today. That looked like an O. 
Anyway. Yeah, Bernie's the witch putting your flash on. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. I needed clarity on that. <laughs> he looked a little bit sus. It's a 3k gold lead. Mad are controlling the early game, as we've said over and over again. And it's not like grubs are being stacked up either for any jungler to add something into the side lane. Although it would be nice for Mad Koi if they can make their way around it. As for now, we just trail and see where these lanes are going to end up. I mean, Super, he's got his Kraken now as well. So he is matching comp, more expensive item naturally. So uh, he's going to be strong. The lane assignments from Rogue are weird. So at least we're sitting around in this mid lane to guarantee push in case the Loya showed up. But we still lose the 2v2. And it means that comp is completely left on his lonesome in that bot side. And now you can see Zoelise being zoned off that bot wave. So Zoelise is being put behind when it comes to uh, trying to get involved in this bot lane, losing out in the CS or the experience. You can see he's down a level. And as well, you always to set up for an opportunity where Comp could have just been dove there. Like, yep. with the amount of damage that Zupa has, and also Alvaro with the amount of CC he has, it, you've got to be so, so careful with this. Maybe because they didn't have the Ignite up, they didn't feel quite as comfortable, but now you definitely need to be careful because it's just about to spawn on Alvaro. Well, he is hovering mid here with Oyoya. Just trying to move around as a pack for Rogue. I guess they're just trying to walk around for a pick using Larson with Zoelu's hovering as well. But it's a very passive play right now, Dagda. I think there is like a way to try and play against this as Rogue though, which is, hey, we're actually going to abandon mid bot terror, right? right? This is done. It's already too low. And you just go for a shift on mass where comp actually rotates mid and you try and rotate Larson and Mark Kuhn up to top side and get a pick onto Mirwin or like put pressure onto Mirwin underneath his top terror. But I think Mirwin kind of aware of that. He's actually just placed a ward into his tri brush on the top side. And now you're in a position where Rogue are behind and there's four members of Madeline's Koi here. But Death Charge makes it a proactive play and Charm might miss there as Markoon is absorbing damage for Dredge Line for the re-engage. Alvaro maybe didn't want that. Flashes over the wall, but where's the full engage? Oh, yeah, starts it off. Three-man Cataclysm and the resets start flying for both Frescawi and Super, who is untouched on the backside and cleaning them up. Rogue in a blink of an eye, take another fight, and at 7-0, it is getting worse. Madeline's Koi were just waiting for Super to get excited off that bot lane turret. He was slowly chipping his way down, and Madeline's were just waiting for that moment to pounce, and just as they're about to finish it off, Alvaro kicks it off with the hook, and it's an easy pickup for Madeline's Koi. Teleport going to come in through mid. Comp is running for his life, because El is also here. Flag and drag can't be flashed, but Comp can E away. So no play is going to be taken in the end, and... Now it's 6,000 gold just about. It is an absolute disaster. And Finn's like, guys, what's happening in the rest of the map? Not like he was winning uh, the lane, but I mean, Mary, TF is inflated. I think Finn can kill him because it is Cassante waiting for the gold card that will come through. That gets a stun up, but wait for this knock back. Auto dead. Yep. In Finn, they believe. Oh, it's an absolute disaster. The one place. At least, well, sorry, I should say for uh, Rogue, massive pickup for them. Yep. Madeline's Koi. This was kind of where you wanted to just have that chill moment, but Mirwin kind of walking in very bizarrely underneath Finn. Finn more than happy to take that, but now Super going to be able to take the top lane turret, maybe, with the amount of pressures here. You'd need Larson to TP in, but there's no yeah. real wards for him to get here if you want to try and go for a real contest here as Rogue, but at least Finn with Iceborne Gauntlet can clear out that wave and lead to terror. At least Larson on the other side of the map while that's all going on is trying to get some gold back here for Rogue with objective bounties. Uh, El Yoya and Alvaro just hovering in top side in the meanwhile, so nothing really to be gained. No dive that's going to be happening, and Larson will be benefiting, but remember, with Herald being taken here and absolutely no contest, that's another turret you feel like could be guaranteed with the state of this game that Mad are going to be taking shortly. So, Herald just taken over. And it's really nice to see from Mad Koi. This early aim is fantastic. Especially what you expect of a top team that hasn't been a top team at the start of spring. Yeah, especially now that they have the lead, they're playing well around. Hey, what's our timers here? And yep. the next one is going to be this Dragon in 30 seconds, right? Well, we got Rift Herald. Fantastic. Let's just plonk super mid lane, take a Yoya alongside him, threaten mid lane turrets and rogue now have to force their hand in mid lane and they can't really get in a position where they can actually fight off of comp or you know markoon get in a position for this next dragon and even with mirin on this bottom side as well they'll be very quickly able to get the numbers advantage finn is ping in top lane tower so i don't even think rogue want to try and contest this position right now try and get some gold back remember i think objective bounties yes they are still up so Finn will be able to get some gold comp. back as charge doesn't get the turret in full combat to cleanse away almost caught out with frescawi Hovering over a charm as well, but as we said, Finn's going to get this turret topside. So, gold goes back down just a little bit. Under 4k now, that's something, but it is Dragon Soul stacking. Mad, in five minutes' time, are going to have themselves a potential Infernal Dragon. That's just grand.
And this is the downside, right? Like, you want to try and contest for this, but you're just not in a position to do so. And now Madeline's Koi, they're running onto the bot side to yeah, catch Mirren. Uh, yeah, he's just running. Where is he going? Dredge line. It's a bait. It's a ruse. Depth charge is good. Shockwave's a three-man, though, but where's the damage? Shuttleway follows through. That's great, but Super is full HP firing from afar. Now that Finn comes in, though, it could change the state of the game as Rogue may have found the Miracle Fight with the culling onto Alvaro, followed up by Larson. Shut down. That's a start. Mirwin with the gold card doesn't get flashed on and threats. Gowie instead with the Spear Rush and the Charm. Kiting it back, but Mirwin's dead next. Look, I hate to say it, but Finn is a genius. Overextension from Madeline's coin the bot side, and now Freskawi, we salute you, has to go over the wall, just about able to escape away, but Rogue, they collapsed perfectly on that bottom side. As I meant to say, look, Dragon started, there is no deep vision for Rogue to get Finn into the fight, so that's why they're completely just leaving it be. But the fact you end up with this massive overextension by Mirwin on the bot side gives that opportunity to, to Rogue to catch on. So Mirwin overextends Super, not in the fight. And Marcoon's not really taking damage from the ranged characters here, so he's completely fine. And then because you overextend onto this bot side, it gets the position for Finn to TP into the fight. Yeah. Completely flanking Madeline's Koi. Super has to flash away, and Marcoon and Finn have to finish off. The low health members of Madeline's court. And you know what? I hated hate to compliment Finn there because it was so great. But the problem is, that gentleman on screen, is that we saw through the top side, it was a solo kill. That was an opening. And for Mad, we're complimenting how clean they were. That was another great thing. But then Finn shuts all that down, casts the curse, and now Super's doing the same. Mad, you are so far ahead. And you've just given another shutdown over to this first pick, Oriana. Roger back in this game quite handedly. But look at where they're positioned on the map. It looks like they're playing Monopoly or something. Everyone is in four <laughs> different corners yeah. of the map. No one is actually trying to get into a position where they can play together and Super ends up being the one that goes to jail as a result. People are going to go to jail. That's right, Dagda. If this goes the other way, I mean, for Rogue, they'll be cheering. But I mean, Mad had this game in the palm of their hands through that bot side, through the state of El Yoya just constantly diving. And then a couple of big picks, overstepping bot. Man, we put the Teemo away. Zero and two. We need to see how this mid game goes because now, Comp and Zoelis, they might have picked up the kills, but we do have a two item Lucian. We do have a lot more damage here, a lot more burst now available. And as we've seen in both fights, Larson picked up not one shutdowns, but two. 1.3k gold ahead. He's got two items. And there is really good scaling on this team for Rogue. Like, let, let's not, let's be frank. They still have Oriana, they have Cassante frontline. There is still really good Wombos to watch throughout this mid-game too. Yeah, I think a lot of it is going to come down to the flank opportunities. Hello. But... Speaking of one, there it is. Super Mega Death Rocket does damage. Larson now caught out. And you know what? It doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter, Dagda. Someone's going to get caught. And this time it's Larson. Yeah, it was considering flashing over the wall, but ended up spotting Alvaro was there and was just like, look, I'm not going to bother wasting it. But good pick for Madeline's Koi, because this game was definitely starting to slip away from them. But now they've got to try and play it a little bit slower. I mean, Super is in mid, which is why Rogue feel comfortable contesting for this red buff before the AD carry of Madeline's Koi actually gets over here. Oh, yeah, he's still being a little bit frisky with it, but for comp, as he moves back to mid, he's got to defend this mid push coming through from Super and Alvaro. And so maybe now Elioe can walk on in, take that away. Marcoon absorbs the damage. Super, still a massive threat on this Jinx. And I guess on the other side, I've talk about scaling, we've got to talk about the Jinx, don't we? Even though Mad have made a couple of mistakes, they still have this Jinx. They still have this very large and in charge, almost three item AD carry that I know they'll be relying on as the game goes on. The big thing for Madeline's Koi, though, was Dragon is up in a minute, and they've managed to set up a bunch of vision on this bottom side of the map, which means it's going to be quite difficult for Rogue as they start trying to approach, because a lot of what Madeline's Koi kind of wants to do at the minute is, hey, Mirror and Freskewi, can we look for a pick with Oyoya? Can we, like, find that moment where, as we just saw with Larson, you can catch a member of Rogue out of position, and then you can look for the next Infernal Dragon, but for Madeline's, uh, or sorry, for Rogue, the fact that you don't have any sort of vision control, it means you need Finn on this bottom side to be the one that's pushing in and like face checking a lot of Madeline's Koi, but Larson doesn't have TP. So Rogue now are kind of split in many different ways across the map and Madeline's Koi are just gonna go, cool, we group mid, we get mid tower, we get dragon, we get soul. This seems like a great trade for us. Seems like a smarter move, I mean, yeah, opening up mid as well. Great when you have TF on your side. So as Mad push that through, dragon in 20 seconds. And TP coming through. This is Finn moving towards mid. We're going to have to see what he can do again. On Cassante, no summoner available in that TP for a flank. He's already here, joined in. The Shockwave starts us off with the fight. Culling's there too. 
A super had to burn double summoner's dagger. I just saw that. No summoners for the Jinx. Not how you want to start a fight. Sets up beautifully for Finn, though. If he can get on towards Super, there's no way for Super to try and escape. That's why Madeline's quite trying to spread out. Fresh Looking Gowie. for Arson. Good charm starts it off. He's going to be exhausted. Jumped on and maybe Fresco. He brings it back as El Yoya puts him in the dome once again. Marcoon zoned out, but we're looking on the side. They're all going after comfort for Mad Koi. They're playing a bit of front to back, but Finn just jumps in yet again. But this time, gets dropped on down because Super keeps getting reset. But an Aqua Prism saves the fight to a partial amount. But Destiny re rolls us back in. And for Mad, they still win it out regardless. So many tools burn to try and get on the backside. That as Markun runs away, it's still those solo lane plays that bring it into fruition. Markun gonna get charmed up, he can't move. And Frescaui, I think you might be the hero that Mad Koi needed. And that was the problem. Rogue knew that they didn't have the vision of that bot side jungle to try and face check it. So instead, they try and force it through mid. TP Finn in so he can be the one to take the forefront. But that means they have no vision at all to spot out Frescaui. No vision for Mirwin. They're trying to deal with Mirwin. And it opens up Frescaui to jump onto Larson. Immediate hook on Alvaro as well to keep Marcoon out of the picture. Which means that you get that ease of access for Ayoya to get onto the Oriana, finish him off, and there's no threat for Super. So even though he lost both the summoner spells, he's finally just keep auto attacking his way through this. Marcoon using everything to get there. And so Ellie's nice bubble, but now the other carries you have to worry about. He's tagged up. For Mad, like we just swung the game back on in again. Yeah. There's been a lot of that in this game. Especially with Infernal Soul. Like, yeah. you're going to be doing so much work. And a lot of that, like, first potential that you already had with, like, the RE and Jarvan or the TF and Jarvan is going to just make it so much more difficult. And again, it kind of comes back to Larson just getting caught on that bot side, giving all that vision to Madeline's Koi, playing off that well. Now, Alvaro, trying to see if he can find someone. Rich line not going to connect. Next up is SKKC to end the week, by the way. That will be a Barney. Favorite word of the week is Super gonna get hit by the Tidal Wave in the backside. He's taking some poke, but they haven't been able to finish the job. Good gold card, but mad stop right there. It's a disengage while Rogue move up towards this Baron side. They've done a bit of damage again on this AD carry. That might open things up to move into River. TP though from Frescoe in behind. You've already got Ayoya in the flank. They're trying to root Rogue out of mid lane. He's gonna do it again, isn't he, Dagger? He's gonna do it again from the angle. He just goes over, it. ignores Marcoon! What is a fox to a man with a long spear? Absolutely nothing as a double for Super. And you know what? With Jinx in this angle, Shock even after off. a good shockwave, it's still Penta o'clock Dagda. I don't care about that, Orient. I don't care because Super's unleashed. It's fire again. Taking all the Quadra. Super's still alive. And Mad Koi makes sure we ain't doubting them anymore in this game. If Cobb had just a little bit more damage in his back pocket, that could have been the turnaround. But instead, it's Mad Lion's Koi steamrolling Rogue. And Alvaro, got to get a little bit of crap there from his AD carry after stealing the Penta. But they'll just be happy that they are putting themselves one step closer to picking up that second win. I was going to say, they'd be happy that they're just getting something on the board after this game. Great early game, shakier points, but we are back to where we started. Rogue now in desperation mode after this Jinx has just picked up more and more gold. Dagda, run me through again as the TP starts to flank. Yeah, I mean, look again, just playing off that vision that was already established, the dragon, Madeline's Koi move in for Skelly, ignores Marcoon, goes straight onto the back line of Finn. He's trying to damn this here to do something, but there's just not enough, especially as Elioia gets in onto the back line. Comp doesn't have any sort of BF item completed just yet. Close. So he just doesn't have the damage that he needs to get through the front line. And Madeline's Koi are just able to absorb the shockwave, which was brilliant from Arson, but Whoa. there's just no follow-up damage after it's all said and done. Man, yeah, he, he they, they knew. Again, they knew. It could have been a, a, a twisted battle, but Mad find it out. And Dagda, you know, again, for a rogue angle here, it's just unfortunate. And I've wanted to do that for a lot of weeks. <laughs> but no one's let me near the screen. Maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be the only time. That's Rogue right now. I'm just pointing out key positions on the map. And for Rogue run and fire, I mean, it's looking like it is in winter, isn't oh, it? Oh, Finn. Look at this one. Point us. Look at this one. Are Look at Finn draw? on the back line. Okay. He's trying to get the massive flank right down. So he hasn't been spotted by any wards. Can he actually get onto Super here, though? This is the journey flank. Uh, yes, he is, because Destiny exists. He's by himself. But 
tanky enough for the time being. The flank turns into a cataclysm. He gets out of it, jumps back in, but a dredge line re engage with the tidal wave. Beautiful. Okay, that's a stop. But he jumps back in. And again, supers range. Unbeatable even with Marcoon finding them away. It won't matter. Mewen in the front line as well. Just another 80 carry threat. As Mad Koi do one thing very, very well. They charge in and they don't stop. Finn is a triple. And Mad Koi are a lion. We want to get here the roar. We finally warm this game up to the point where Mad are unstoppable. And as Rogue sit in the base, dead and watching, Mad finally get a bit of a charge in this split and won't be defeated today. And it looked like Rogue from the early stages might have had a chance to try and play up bot lane a little bit better, but the impatience and trying to make that dive happen just gives the kills to Super. He outplayed them entirely alongside Alvaro on that bot lane dive, and from there, this game was all about the Jinx just getting her time to scale. Badlines Koi getting the vision control that they needed to just find those picks and find those fights that they needed to shut down Rogue. A little bit dicey, but I mean, it stemmed all off that early game. Credit where credit is due. The early game was fantastic. And if you want to agree with me, you can vote for your clear key player of the game at LEC on X. Is it El Yoya, Frescaui, or Super? I kind of think it's Frescaui. I'm just going to say the Jinx was fantastic, but Frescaui with the pick off the sides in the RE gameplay deserves it for me. However, when we return to finish off this week, we've got a new episode of Duo Q with Saken, and Cabo, and Niski, and Exa Kick. We'll be right back for our last game. I'll be right back. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Wow, very incredible, magnificent. What? No, 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 no. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, keep it. It was so good. This is better.